Welcome to the Big Sui, presented by DraftKings. Why are you listening to this show? The podcast that seems very similar to the other Dan Lebitard podcast. I'm sorry, I'm not going to apologize for that. <laughs> in fact, the only difference seems to be this imaging. I have been tempted in restaurants just walking past tables to grab somebody's fries that if they're just there. That hasn't happened to you guys? I've done it. And now, here's the marching man to nowhere, fat face, and the habitual liar. I'm always on the hunt for good new programming, Mike. And now I think a lot of us, many of you listening to this, have reached a breaking point where you realize, okay, if I want to watch something behind a paywall streaming service, if I'm going to spend on Peacock or one of these others that I do not have outside of the ones that I know make good stuff or the ones that are part more of my habit, my familiar habit, because Netflix makes a lot of money just because people have had Netflix for a long time. Are you guys recommending anything these days? Apple Plus is making some cool shit. They are, they are very discerning. They've got all the money in the world. They do not make a lot of things. So they, they have taken the, a different lane than Netflix. Netflix is like, just pump it out. Just keep pumping out. Apple's saying, we've got all your money. That's not how we're going to do it. We're going to have Tom Hanks on a battleship in a movie. We're going to do big things. I have all the streaming services. I, I have them all. And uh, I've seen the deterioration of, uh, of Netflix over the last few years, as has everyone. Um, they're blaming password sharing. Really, they should look in a mirror. I, I, I missed out on last week's conversation that you had with Mike Sure, I did enjoy the social clips that you put out because I am very distressed as someone that loves the HBO Max platform and also has access to Discovery Plus. I'm not cool with them making the content decisions for probably the greatest content studio of our lifetimes, HBO. Over the course, they reinvented... It's not TV, it's HBO. They reinvented dramatic television series. But now I think Apple is best positioned out of all of them. Apple TV Plus, as you mentioned, they're discerning. And they kind of limped out there at the beginning. The morning show, very mixed reviews. I like the morning show. It was big and flashy and you saw what they were trying to do. They were trying to capitalize on the moment. They threw every star at it. And the writing was one note off and it got weaker as the series progressed. But that was a big, giant swing. Like they had, you've got Aniston, Reese Witherspoon. It was a giant cast. I, I saw a show that had no idea what it wanted it to be. And then finally, towards the end of this the season, they, they kind of figured it out. And I'm going to I'll keep with it because I think the talent on the show is too good for it to not find its way. And there are shows that start out a little slower, and that's fine. But For for uh, for All Mankind was another show that I actually watched a little bit of, and I kind of liked it, but I, it just got lost in the shuffle. But then Ted Lasso came along. Severance? Did Severance do anything I for you? I still haven't gotten into oh, Severance. Severance. I, was, here's, I was supposed to get into Severance last night. I was supposed to. I had planned my evening around Severance. I was going to start this show. It's slow, and the expectation... I'll be curious to see how you feel about it now that the expectations have been raised. I, I've i told you before that the choices Ben Stiller has been making since before Tropic Thunder, uh, I think he's got a Showtime show that's great, Escape from Denimora. Um, yeah, that he, he's taking a giant swing with Severance. But Apple, they only have like five shows, and so when you go through their interface... You have a limited selection. I was going to get to Severance, but then I landed on this show, Blackbird. And I had seen a tweet earlier in the day that had me curious, and I saw the trailer with my wife, and the trailer absolutely hooked me in because I'm a fan. One of my favorite shows of all time was this very little-watched uh, direct TV show called Kingdom about a family and MMA and all sorts of family dynamics. You should tell people that. Yeah, so if they I don't even know back, where it's available. If they want to go back and see it, Kingdom... Kingdom was very good, and one of the bit players in Kingdom uh, stars in Blackbird. It's still on Netflix, still on Netflix uh, Ryan Cortez tells me. Thank you very much, Ryan. Uh, it's still on Netflix. Go check out Kingdom, because it was not watched at all when it was I really on the liked air. it. And it ended up being a star-making vehicle for one Paul Walter Hauser, who went on to be cast in a, in a Clint Eastwood movie. I think he's a supremely talented actor. He can play creepy, but get you to care about the character emotionally better than damn near anyone right now. And he's in this show alongside Taron Edgerton, who I 
believe to be a bit of a ham. But oh, come on. that's neither here nor there. there. I don't love <laughs> him as an there? actor. He is a, he's no, a bit of a ham. Well, it's his body. Let's be honest. Well, his what body is his body body perfect. About his, body. Body. Like like his body is perfect, and I believe Mike is threatened by it. It makes him feel less <laughs> masculine. <laughs> and he's because his character is over the top. <laughs> And an aggressive sexual being. Oh, that he, first that first episode, that first by episode. the way. Oh God. I learned some moves. Anyway, <laughs> Terrence <laughs> No, and Terran's actually very understated Put in this. Put it on the movie. poll, please, Roy, <laughs> at Lebitard Show. Have you, you have you learned some sexual moves watching uh television? So <laughs> Terran actually was in Rocket Man and wow. he's uh He was great in Kingsman too. Kingsman, like Kingsman I, I loved him in yeah. Kingsman, but I don't it, He's in this movie, Sing 2, that my daughter makes me watch all the time, and she just plays a sky full of SARS covers that he does, and it's just, I can't enough with this song already. So maybe that's part of what's happening right there. But I just think him to be too much. But I think he's perfect in this in this series. Very understated, despite the, the, the constant James Dean scowl that he's going for. He is going for modern-day James Dean. He's got the, he's got the chin. Short, short king modern-day James yeah. Dean, who was probably also a short king back in his day, too. But he is a really short king. But he would make for an he'd make for a great impossible white man, right? In any of these movies, yeah, he, Kingsman, he is the impossible white man, and also uh, as a Golden Cane. I saw that this was Ray Liotta's final uh, piece of work out there, and my wife loves Ray Liotta, so we got right into Blackbird, and my God, pa, this was a <laughs> tremendous experience. I'm halfway through the series. I'm at the edge of my seat. I love this show. The music in this show for '90s kids. It is pitch perfect. They do such a great job of building the tension. It is a slow burn. The pacing may not be everybody's favorite, but they tell parallel stories at a time, and you learn about this mystery surrounding this person, this, um, let's let's call him the baddie for the, the show. I'm halfway done, and I still don't know if he's bad or not. I kind of think he is, but I don't think he can be convicted, and that's what is at the crux of this series. I love it, and if this is a sign of what's to come for Apple, I think, given what's happening with HBO Max and what's happening with Netflix, Apple may be the, the horse to bet on here. Mike, you know this is a true story, right? Yeah. It's, well, it's, they remind you every every day. They do, but like, <laughs> I, I actually did a little cheating and went a little deeper in the internet and started reading Are about Are you finished with it yet? I've got like two episodes left. There's only six. It's six yeah, episodes, and I, I've only got the last one left. My, my wife has seen the last one because I fell asleep. And she didn't want to stop, but she was disappointed by the ending. Really? Yes. Uh, and, and and it matters on these things whether you nail the dismount or not. If you're if you're going to get the echo that you want in, in word of mouth. Let me warn you: if your father triggers you, if your father brings you shame, oh, yeah. if your father does not make your life easier, if he's this a show, cop, this show is not for you. There are so many skin crawling moments involving Ray Liotta's character that I just feel, and it probably doesn't land like that on. Oh no, no, no! Well, it didn't land like that on 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 me, but I will say that I found myself moving away from the television to get away from Ray Liotta. So <laughs> it didn't land on me consciously. Like, please examine your relationship with your father. But uh, as someone who did a TV show next to my dad for eight years, but I did move away from the television set because Ray Liotta was not helpful while trying to love his son but i was i'm not sure if my wife let me ask you guys this hypothetical as we have the larger conversation about how you're streaming if you're five episodes through on six episodes and your wife tells you the sixth one is no good and your tastes run similar watch for yourself i mean you determine that you know i mean I trust her judgment on this stuff, though. You're right, but watch it when she's not what, home. What, what I'm mean. what I'm telling you, though, is that I lost interest in it. I, I, you don't just leave one, that one episode laying out there. <laughs> I would have watched it already if she hadn't said, "Ah, eh, it's not. It doesn't. It doesn't land." The same thing happened to me with Peaky Blinders. My wife is a huge fan of Peaky Blinders, and like the last episode of the last season, it's a f season finale, and there's nothing else, and you're waiting for Tommy to do something. And she's like, yeah, it was good. I wish I I wish I had more. So it took me like two months to see it because I was just like, meh, I'm good. I saw two episodes of this season of Peaky Blinders so far, and I kind of checked out on it. No, you got to keep going. I'll revisit. That's always my experience with Peaky Blinders. Always. I get frustrated because it's so slow, and then by the end of it, I'm like, this is one of the greatest shows ever. James Dean was 5'8". Short King. Jimmy Dean. One Speed Dean. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's I that's wanna, an unfortunate nickname. That's his nickname. It is unfortunate given the way that he died. 
Just telling you his nickname. That's all. Jimmy Dean, 5'8". I, I think you should apologize to James yeah. Dean. Sorry, James. And also apologize to the Cuban community in Miami yeah. for saying yeah. that it was Fidel a terrible Castro mistake. was the GOAT. Uh, I slept with it last night. Oh. I, I had a hard time sleeping. I had to be honest with you. I felt bad about it. I did. I was so hoping you'd About go, not listening. I, mean, I was I was so hoping you would have gone the other way on that. Like said, <laughs> oh, he is, Dan, of Caribbean dictators. You'll never find one that's finer, better than Batista. I was hoping that you'd go into Mel Kuyper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to apologize for something that I said yesterday. I had assumed that John Leguizamo was Puerto Rican because he has told me he's Puerto Rican. But then I did some digging on the internet afterwards, and this is a, apparently a big controversy for John Leguizamo, who was who was born in Colombia, has always maintained that he was Puerto Rican on his father's side, but his father himself has come out and said that he's not Puerto Rican. So I'm not sure what's oh. going on. Leguizamo still maintains Puerto Rican descent. I wanted to ask you, because HBO Max is making so many good things, I watched part of the first season of Gordita, uh, uh, Gordita Chronicles, and they canceled it as part right before everything with HBO Max shifted, in which if you like HBO, uh, your viewing habits are about to change if they're reportedly cutting 70% of their workforce. But it felt like a Capasa USA campy to me. It was a note off, but it was... Even an more than Father of the Bride? Uh, well, F Father of the Bride is the most streamed movie in the history of HBO Max because of how underserved the Latin community is on some of this stuff. It's a Miami... Uh, it's Andy Garcia and Gloria Stefan, but Gordito, Gordita Chronicles, um, it felt campy on purpose and it had some authentic Latin elements that I haven't seen on television since Que Pasa USA, like in 1980, where I recognized pieces and portions of my childhood in it. And if that's already, if that, if Latins are already underserved and under, uh, underrepresented in streaming, what do you think is going to happen now? When Netflix is cutting back and HBO Max is getting out of the business, this show reached Latin people. Latin people liked it, and now it's being discontinued after a, a, a season because uh, that that market is a unicorn that all streaming services are trying to get to. I think everybody is well within their rights to be deeply nervous and concerned because not anyone has anything bad to say about HBO Max. It's expensive, maybe, but... Everyone knows that it's got certified bangers on there. And we're turning to Discovery right now. I was so nervous about it. And then I saw their presentation in which they, they dubbed the 90 Day Fiance show as a show worthy of having its own universe. And they classified shows uh, that are in their locker. And 90 Day Fiance was held in higher regard than The Sopranos and Curb Your Enthusiasm. I was, I was deeply concerned by all of this. But 90 Day Fiance does have a bigger audience than The Sopranos. Well, maybe not The Sopranos now, or maybe not The Sopranos then, but certainly The Sopranos now. And Curb Your Enthusiasm. It's the unfortunate truth. I find fascinating. We have CNBC on here in the studio, and they did a whole segment yesterday on the business of streaming. Ultimately, this has been a bubble. It's a bubble that we as consumers have gotten to enjoy. But basically, it has been a race to credit cards that renew once a month, right? Who is gonna get your credit card that renews once a month? And I think now a lot of companies are kind of realizing at a certain, certain point, we have to turn a profit on this stuff and we haven't. And so real genuine business decisions are being made and that's at, to the, that's at the cost of the consumer because the tens of billions of dollars being pumped into content was always wildly unsustainable. We've just gotten to enjoy it and now it's going to become a proper business and things will be sacrificed as a result. Mike Schur is going to be on with us here uh, to do a stat of the day, and he just had a project, and it was heartbreaking. That Field of Dreams project, he's a baseball guy, they had gotten deep into spending on, you know, a lot of money. Baseball field in Iowa to do a television project that represents his nice uh, next work at a company that has been great to him and he's been great to that company for 25 years and they realized that whatever the rest of the budget was no we could just cut it off just stop it kill it right here and we save x number of millions of dollars and then all the work just disappears it just vanishes and so when you say that you're worried about some of this stuff i was talking to barkley some off air and he really wrestled really wrestled with what to do 
and it was, it was f fascinating to see what was happening because Charles Barkley is at TNT. They too have been bought. And so it's different work experience. Like it was for us at Disney, it became a different work experience and he's going to retire soon. And the idea of being able to get into his sixties, a giant paycheck where he can help black colleges and use some of that money, uh, but throw away everything he's been for 40 years. You're not a sellout. You, we like you. We Barkley gives up everything, endorsements, everything. I thought that he could have, by just publicly saying that he wouldn't take these millions of dollars, because it was, what was it, 700, 800 million for Tiger Woods, to God? Yes, like, right. Well, so, a billion, some people reported. Yeah. The to, to trade in at 60 years old, the parachute of like, hey, it's just Saudi money. But he's been on television, Barkley, for 40 years, too, guys. He still gets to host Saturday Night Live. His career is one of the most amazing things you will ever see. From, from guy who was polarizing to guy who gets to be liked the rest of his life as an outspoken black man. That just never happens. No. And he would have been trading it. And I thought, you tell me whether you think I'm right or wrong about this. That if he says, I'm staying at TNT, which has changed ownerships, and you're going to see content changes everywhere as people who don't do content start running content. When you've been with these, he, he was under stress. I never think of Charles Barkley as ever under stress. Anything related to Charles Barkley is never stressful. He was stressed by what was happening because he understood that there would be a trade being made on everything he's been with the American public if he made that decision to just cash out on everything he's been. My, my whole problem with Liv from the get-go is I don't understand why people care more about Charles Barkley than the U.S. completing a $3 billion weapons deal with Saudi Arabia last week. I don't for the well, life care of care about that I, too, I cannot make Phil Mickelson the avatar for my geo political relations with Saudi Arabia. I just cannot. Like, if you're going to get mad in this country, be Team PGA about Phil Mickelson, take a look around. Like, keep your eye on the ball. But it is would, not about Phil Mickelson or Charles Barkley. But just so you know, though, he would have lost. He would have. He couldn't do both. He, and he would have lost his sponsors. Right. He would have lost. Uh, he makes, uh, I think he's told people this publicly, uh, that he, he makes $20 million a year mm -hmm. and half of it is salary and half of it is sponsors. He would have lost his sponsors. To guys, All of them, though? Every sponsor? Because I think some sponsors have stayed with guys like Dustin Johnson. Some of them have, right? Like Barkley, he still would have been beloved enough where some of those sponsors I maybe I don't stay know. with he, him. He thought it was an either or choice. So I don't know. Okay. And if that's the either or choice, Mike, it's not quite. Yes, you can talk about all of these conundrums everywhere, but it's rarely as obvious as this is where you've got someone using golf, the country club sport. It's not teammates. It's not commitment to team. It's individuals. It's ripe. It is so vulnerable for, oh, we'll just drug. We'll we'll launder our money over here. We'll grab Greg Norman. They're all individual corporations. It's easier to do. I don't need teams. I don't need. I don't need regional identities. I just grab dudes by by paying this tax. This tax of how many more millions can I give you to soil your, your name in the spirit of perhaps people like Mike will get weary of the principle. I mean, you 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 got mad at Aaron Rodgers yeah. at at the at the the choice. But I still watch Aaron Rodgers. I still love watching Aaron Rodgers play. I. I have not watched Live Golf yet. I've seen some clips on social media. The screen kind of bothers me. I don't understand what we're doing with these horrific logos. And I don't like that they've diluted the PGA tournaments because I just like seeing the best golfers play. I am also not boycotting Live Golf. If they have something worth watching, I might be curious if they change up their presentation and make it more uh, agreeable with my palate, I may give it a shot. I'm not going to make a big political stance over golf, for Christ's sakes. I, I just find it exhausting. Would I do it if I were in their shoes? Absolutely not. But I'm not going to judge them any further than I already have. I'm not going to rob myself of the enjoyment, possibly, of one day being able to watch high-level golf, just like I judge Aaron Rodgers and I still enjoy it. And they are not, by the way, in any realm the same thing. Aaron Rodgers is, I was harder on Aaron Rodgers than I've been on the Saudi government just because it was a topic du jour. And if I come across that way, 
crush me for that hypocrisy because no, not at all. Aaron, my problems with you are very minor. I you need, can send that to Tom Fan. I need something nice. I do. He <laughs> hasn't responded yet. That's a good I'm a little one, though. That's a good clip, no, though. That's it, a no, good clip. No, it's not good enough. I, my, no. my, but he wasn't good enough? Look, no. I think if it's well, the well, most... Aaron Rodgers, look, 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 oh, okay. look me in the eye. Aaron Rodgers yeah. is way better than the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I've said it. I've said it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I need yes, more. I hold yeah. him in way higher regard. I, I think the, yeah. the quote on the movie poster that you said to Tom Fanning to see if we can mm. uh, look even more pathetic, begging for Aaron Rodgers to come on with <laughs> us, is Aaron Rodgers, my issues with you are very small. Very Aaron minor. Rogers, <laughs> very minor. My issues with you are very, very minor. <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, look, Sukat's informed everybody that the world is spinning faster. I've got more of a problem with that than I do with you. <laughs> Just had our shortest day ever. I mean, anyone concerned about that? Anybody? Yeah. Anyone keeping track of this? I am I mean, concerned that yeah. Earth is like, all right, let's speed this thing up already. Let's get this let's thing get over to the with. End. <laughs> So God's here for my friends over at Simply Safe. Around here, we talk a lot about the importance of good defense on the field or court. But what about defending your own home turf? Pretty important, huh? We believe home should be the safest place on earth for every family, which is why I use and recommend Simply Safe Home Security. Simply Safe is advanced whole home security that puts you, your home, and your family safety first. Here's why I love it. Easy to install. I lo- if I could do it, anyone could do it. And I love to be able to keep an eye on my driveway to see what packages are coming up. Keep an eye, see when the kids get home, when I'm away. I love Simply Safe. It is amazing. Simply Safe offers comprehensive protection, not only against intruders and burglary, but against expensive home hazards from flooding the fires with 24/7 professional monitoring. Simply Safe's agents take action the moment a threat is detected. You can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com/dlb. Go today and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash DLB. Don Lebertard. Billy's got a conundrum here. He's got a dog now, and he doesn't know how to socialize with other dog owners. Stugats. Dogs, Dan. I don't know if you're aware of dogs. Dogs like to smell each other and kind of like socialize and all that stuff. So then I'm holding on to a leash with my dog on it while another owner is doing the same thing. And I don't know how to interact with this owner in this case. Like, hey, you know, my dog uh, likes your dog's butt smell. As you guys know, I'm not good at small talk. So, like, this is a nightmare for me because what do I talk to these other dog owners about? I experienced this exact same thing with my kid at a park. It's the same thing. Kids and dogs are basically the same. It's the same same exact thing. Put it on the poll at Levitard Show. Are kids and dogs basically the same? Because my two-year-old wants to run over and play with other kids, and all of a sudden I'm standing there, and our two kids are kind of chasing each other, and we're like, hey, yep, there's our kids. How about that? This is the Don Levitard Show with the Stugat. We are presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today and use code DAN for a special offer when you sign up. That's code DAN only at DraftKings Sportsbook. You mentioned uh, being more agreeable to your palate, and I thought Tony had uh, a decent list he was assembling back there because... He is, and I don't know the food that he was speaking of, but he wanted to do a table or make a table for, see if I have this right, things that smell wonderful, but then disappoint you when you eat them because you thought that the smell uh, was going to make it extra delicious. Hmm. Uh. So Dan, I was at Epcot over the weekend drinking around the world, and uh, we're getting to the part in the bend at Epcot where you go from Italy to America. And you start walking by and you start smelling something. You're like, what's that smell? It smells delicious. Oh, my God. And then you realize what it is. It's the turkey leg stand. The oh. Disney turkey leg yep. smells so much better than it tastes. Yep. Because when you get it That's in your hand, one, man. you it's take a, a bite one. and you're like, yeah. oh, I got to finish this whole thing. I just paid $25 for this. It's salty. It's, it's giant. It's greasy. There's a vein in my mouth. Like, why is there a vein here? It's like, And uh, you're working. It's hard work to eat that turkey hot, leg. You're not dude. even sure if it's turkey. It might be emu. I don't know. This is going Ooh. to be hard to top because he is so right about this. Turkey smells delicious. But there is there is actually something deeply disgusting about what I just realized for the first time. I you have lifted the scales from my eyes, which is 
Disney's been suckering me for years with that smell, and all they're giving me is basically the limb of a giant bird being cooked, I don't know how, <laughs> being treated, I don't know how, on what farm. And now I'm walking around, and this is the most primitive thing in the world. Well, that little kid's got a $25 balloon. That little kid's got a $25 cotton candy. And I, caveman for the ages, am holding a giant limb of a bird that is disgusting. <laughs> and I'm walking around with it. No, you didn't do me the courtesy of throwing a garnish on there. There's no bread to be found. Right. It's just me, the <laughs> grease. There's nothing. You made no effort to do anything other than sever a bird's leg and throw it in the fryer. And it is so hot at Epcot. The sun is beaming down. You're on the face of the sun. It's, it's salty. 9,000 degrees, and you're eating this hot chicken leg. Who's going to yeah. beat this? I mean, the, the, the turkey leg. Do you, do you disagree generally with the turkey leg? Like, do you pull a turkey leg at Thanksgiving? No, I never do. The turkey yeah. leg to me wow. is the worst part of the leg because, or the worst part of the turkey, because there's like muscles and like bones that are there yeah. that you don't Tendons. really realize are there. Yeah. And you're like, oh, why? like, yeah, like, oh, you, like you, a, you pick a little small bone out of your teeth. It's like, a little it, too it, much it, of a reminder that you're eating an animal. Yeah, yeah it's very yeah. shardy. Yeah. It's like, that's yeah, shards. Mm. Yeah. I have something else though. Usually holding up a, a meaty leg does that. When you go to the heat games and you're walking by the concourse and you start. What is that? That smells delicious. It's those like cinnamon or honey oh, almonds or peanuts or whatever. Yeah. They're so Miami almonds. They taste Terrible. like shit. Really? They're so oh, bad. They, they smell, smell so smell great, great though. Without, yeah. further, without further ado, not, wow. not crunchy Top enough. Top five great smelling foods that underwhelm oh, wow. once you taste them. Wow. Here we go. Uh, Inspired by Tony Sobek. I'm not going to write this down. Before, Number five. <laughs> But hold on. Before we get to that, I simply want to know, Roy, we, Roy uh, objected to Tony never having a turkey leg. Is that uh, at Thanksgiving? Is that what you were objecting to? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, because he what? He blasphemed against you? Or yeah. That? Yes. Yes. I'm a breast guy. Hubba, hubba. Mm. Number five. <laughs> Number five. Good Tony, leg, you're on it. <laughs> Number five is hot nuts. Yeah, hot nuts. Oh, I love hot nuts. Hot nuts. I'm not saying nuts. that they're bad. This is going to be a very controversial list because I'm not telling you that these foods are bad. I'm just telling you that they're not nearly as good tasting as they smell. Subjective. Right. They set very high expectations with their intoxicating yeah. smell. Underworld. Right. <laughs> and number four, this one's easy. Because there isn't a single goddamn time I'm at a restaurant when someone orders a fajitas that I don't go, damn, Whoa. I should have ordered Whoa. the fajitas. Yeah. The great taste. You're saying it underwell? Wait yeah. a minute. Oh, my God. You're so fucking wrong about this. This is unacceptable. The fajita made well is something that you've got to. Onion slathered. Oh, the best. Yes, if you're getting some shitty wrap. If you're getting something that, what are you kidding me? Grilled onions? Like, come on. Knock it off. Fellas. This I'm, not telling you that fa I'm not telling you that fajitas are bad. Yeah. I'm just telling you that they pale in comparison to the uh, aromatic experience. I, I am going to need you, okay, to back off and understand. This is where you want him to this, back off, not Aaron Rodgers? This, 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 this is why I want him to back off, because his expertise here cannot and will not be mine. I love fajitas. Yeah. You but, do not dabble in Mexican the way that I do. And what I am telling you is the fajita done well at the correct place, delivered properly. You go from your expectations getting very high to them exceeded by a well-made fajita. You're eating crap somewhere. I do dabble in Mexican as much, if not more, than you, Dan Levitard. Whoa! And let me tell you something. Every time I order the sizzling hot fajitas uh -huh. that come to my table, I do enjoy them. But I never enjoy them more than I wish that I had ordered them exactly. when I'm sitting at another table and then order the burrito grande <laughs> mm. and someone has a fajitas. I'm like, God damn it! Oh, yeah. I should have had the yeah. fajitas. Yeah. Right, 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 that right, feeling. Right, 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 the yeah. grande is yeah. good. Though. No, the burrito. Yeah. And, and if I'm at ordering the ceviche, I'm like, in the moment, I know that this tastes better than the fajitas. But for that moment that it comes out sizzling and I smell nothing, it, I'm nothing like, beats oh, God, it. Nothing beats it. I, I, I withdraw my objection. You've it's made a fair. sound and coach argument. Oh really did. no! I'm going to piss you off. We're only at four. Right. This is oh. going to piss you Roy. off because oh these are great smelling foods that underwell compared to the smell. But just so we're clear, you do like fajitas. Love fajitas. Okay. Every but, type. Fajita. Meat. Roy. Meat. Chicken. Vegetable yeah. fajitas even. Scott fajitas. <laughs> oh, the sword has been laid down. Oh, no. The great gunner. I mean. <laughs> yes, Dan. 
why why did uh, Scott Fajita just and deliver Nancy, that? Dan, we're talking Fajitas. <laughs> I mean, um, Roy, excellent call. Can Good you job. put on the poll, please, at Lebitard Show, the fajita that's sizzling toward your t- toward your table? Does it exceed expectations in taste, or does it disappoint you? It can only disappoint. It doesn't matter how bomb ass those fajitas are. It doesn't matter how fat your fajitas are. If they come to your table, they're not going to taste as good as they look like they're going to taste. There is nothing like the feeling of you feel like your fajitas have finally arrived. You hear that you unmistakable hear it. It's smell. coming. It's Everyone it's coming. Nice. It's coming. You Everyone. smell the aromatic <laughs> yeah. experience. Everyone. Is wonderful. You can and tell all the dads in the, the restaurants are turning. <laughs> right. And then at the last, the waiter turns the other way. <laughs> for no, someone else. No, yes. No, yes. Where did you go? Yeah. Yeah. I should have had yeah. the yeah. 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 That's, um, I. There is no food quite like this because now we've realized that for for... For men whose greatest pleasure, because you've left behind all the other pleasures, you're now a dad who secures the perimeter. This is champagne bottles with sparklers in your past. Fajitas. It's a play <laughs> this, the this is for, for dads. For dads. <laughs> <laughs> because Mike said, as this tray comes out and it's sizzling, and now it's a lit fuse. And you know what it attracts? Dads. Dads sit up in their booths. That sound is a siren's call. Everybody corrects their posture when the feet. Well, every dad in the building has perfect posture when the fajitas come out. You forgot that this place even they ordered didn't. fajitas, and then the sizzle right. reminds you, why didn't I order the fajita? Right. Oh. But the reason why I didn't order the fajitas is when I finally ordered the fajitas, it underwhelmed. And I remember that. But every damn time that thing comes out there, I'm like, God damn it, I should have ordered the fajitas. Put that on the poll as well, Roy. Should you have ordered the fajitas? Mm-hmm. Scott Fajita. God damn it. <laughs> Number three. Oof, this is a, a hot list right now. You know when you got a good one. Popcorn, Number three. Popcorn. No! Oh, that's a good one. It's a good one. No! Popcorn it's great. What? smells right. terrific. Yep. Yes. And it never tastes as good as it smells. Uh, All right, I'm going to have to bring, make my popcorn. I'm gonna Your have popcorn to... is Oh, you have great. a special brand of popcorn? Oh, yeah, his popcorn his popcorn's a among the popcorn. best popcorn I've ever had, and it doesn't taste as good as it smells. <laughs> wow. That's what this list is. It's a good one. I'm putting very good dishes on this list, guys. But they underwhelm compared to the smells. Yeah. This is so, the harsh reality of popcorn. So you eat popcorn at a movie theater and you go, mm, I don't yeah. eat popcorn in a movie theater. No, nah, too expensive. What? No, too expensive. Number one, Roy, bang on. And also, I don't trust their popcorn. Mm. What do you mean you don't mm-hmm. trust their popcorn? I don't it. trust a food that is transported in garbage bags. They're telling you right what they think of it. They're but, telling you right there. But what if they get it out of the thing? No. That thing, the it's, communal thing? No, thank you. It's the most effective vessel. No. No. Just because it's a garbage can no. does not mean that it is like <laughs> covered in this. How many filth. times? Let me ask you. How many times do you think they clean the popcorn machine at a movie theater? Probably not very often. That thing has oil in it from like the Independence Day opening. But Mike, do, do you think there is there are kernels of corn at the bottom of that popcorn maker that were there for the Nutty Professor premiere, <laughs> the first Bush administration? <laughs> but you have no Mike, idea how old the kernels of popcorn you were having at a movie. Independence Day was made in '96. I mean, how, how much do you think that any food that is served to you is well prepared on in, in a movie clean theater? Kitchens? Very little. I know, but but like anywhere at any restaurant, you eat filthy shit. All the time. No, 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 no. But what are you doing? no, no. What trust me. Do? What, no. what are you doing? What are you doing? Come on, man. Let me enjoy my dinner. Jesus. When I order the Skittles, what are you doing, what are you doing, this, to me? What are you doing this to me? When I order the Skittles, I can tell right. from the packaging and uh, expiring yeah. dates that it's not a Skittle that was there for Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, come on. Roy, put these on the poll, please. Do you trust movie theater popcorn? I've got a number of these, so get ready. It's many of them. Do you trust any food delivered in garbage bags? <laughs> this is a third poll question. What if they get it out of that thing? <laughs> Tony, I guess you meant the the the, the popcorn machine. Whatever, we all know what he meant. Whatever that, that, thing, that is called. That yeah, thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Uh, do they clean? the movie theater popcorn thing, and finally, do you eat filthy shit all the time? <laughs> you do. I didn't Every, like that. Everything is dirty. Just if, knock it up. We know. 
No. Okay, we got it. We I don't need filters. No, I think yeah. most people just, they know, they store it in the back of their minds. They don't need to be reminded that, hey, when I go out for dinner, I'm eating a bunch of filth. Okay, let me enjoy my dinner. Let me enjoy my filth. <laughs> right. That's Number- God's tombstone. <laughs> Making a cleanliness argument against popcorn does not make any sense to me. I didn't think that we would be pulling the knives out for this top five list. It's got everybody the, the, talking. The movie not theater popcorn yet. is the best smelling of the popcorns, correct? We're in agreement that the movie theater popcorn, the, yes. everything else, it's so salty, it's so rich, it's so buttered because what the smell is. Just, and then you oh, have the extra fake butter on the side. Yeah, 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 you ever yeah, do yeah, the yeah, thing? Yeah, battery acid. Yeah, yeah, you eat like the yeah, first yeah. the first third before the trailers are done, and then right before the trailers finish, you go back outside, apply a second layer of the butter Buddy, topping. I got something that's going to change your life. Mm. Are you ready? Totally. What you do is you go to that motor oil machine that they have there, Yep. and then you actually get a straw and put it in the spigot of the butter machine. Whoa. You put it inside your <laughs> popcorn, oh, dear you God. start pouring it, and then you slowly move it down, and then it's... Butter's all Whoa. the way around. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. If I were to yeah. ever eat popcorn at a movie theater, I might try that. But I would never because rats bathe in it. In Number thing, two. Right? <laughs> they do. Ask them. Ask I, a movie I, theater I employee. Believe. Look it up. Ask them. It, uh, rats <laughs> bathe in those Roy, things. Roy, put it, put it on the poll. Is the bag of movie theater popcorn a bubble bath? For rats. <laughs> Number two. Oh, wow. Number oh, two. It's a good some, list, Mike. Something that I really enjoy. It's good. We can all admit that it's really good. But it doesn't taste as good as it smells. Number two is coffee. Ah, mm. oh, waking up. The best part of waking up <laughs> is Folgers in your cup. Yeah. But not in your mouth. Fresh pot. Especially and- the way that I take it when I'm IFing. It's just black. So my coffee experience has been really diluted lately because I'm just doing it so I can wake up and take a shit <laughs> with mixed results. This is why uh, you're securing the perimeter and you are fighting off uh, the vagaries of aging at every turn. Will you do the same, though? If you get through like the first half hour, 45 minutes, an hour of your day without pooping, will you go for the coffee? Because I do. And I'm just drinking the coffee, just the poop. That and a heater. I mean, it works every the time. The heaters work yeah. for pooping. I don't understand yeah. how that works. You want to join me for one? No. Diuretic. How yeah. often do you smoke a cigarette on the toilet? Like, when's the last time? Oh, I haven't done that. I mean, since last week. I mean. <laughs> Number one. Number one. This is going to be so controversial uh, because it tastes great. Turkey leg isn't even on there. What is happening? Turkey leg's not on there. It tastes great. Oh, well, I. But it doesn't taste as good as it smells. And I can't even look at you guys in the eyes. But number one, for the price and everything, it's truffle. Oh, oh wow. the price. Oh, oh come wait, on, the man. Price. You come on, the come price. on, man. Truffle and fries. I, I love truffle fries. My truffle fries. I always fries. order the truffle. Oh, come on, Mike. I always want come them on, to Mike. shave it on Mike. there as if it were Parmesan cheese and I'm at the macaroni grill. Mm. I spend so much money on truffle. I always accept the upcharge on truffle. It's like the guac at Chipotle. I got to have it. But it doesn't taste as good as it smells. It just doesn't. You want it to taste like it smells, and it doesn't. You know I'm telling the truth. And that's why it's number one, because it's so expensive. All right, we're going to go to Mike Schur's stat of the day here, but he's picking up the last part of this conversation and just get his opinion on it. Tell him what it is that you've told the group. You threw in price on truffle. Truffle is expensive. Part of the experience. I would, that's what helps make something overrated. All right. Uh, you want to Timmy give, Tuffle. Go ahead and uh, Timmy Tuffle. I mean, you know, truffle. Timmy Truffle. I mean, Scott Vegeta. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing? You've never know. heard of Tim Tuffle, uh, a great man. utility uh, infielder for the New York Mets back in the yeah, 80s I mean, great, and 90s. Great is overstated. Ah, he was fantastic, yeah. Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you be a great utility player? Lenny Harris. I, of course you can. Yeah, well, I think, like, in the grand scheme of things, Mike, you're great at being a utility player. The goat of utility players? Like, Jose Alfredo Omezica was a great utility Mezzi. player, but he wasn't great. Jose Okendo is one of the great utility players of all time. I don't want to hear about it. That's not true in, it it, it's in any way. So okay. Mike Mike sure is going to give us a stat of the day in a second. But Mike Ryan has put together his top five list of uh, foods that smell great coming out, but don't taste as great as the smell. What would be the number one off the top of your head, Mike? Uh, 
That's tough. I, um, th so they, these are overrated foods that are overrated based on how they smell, not and that they don't taste as well as they smell. Is right. that correct? Right. Yeah. But the, the the trick here is they can still taste amazing, but they just underwhelm compared to how great they smell. Yeah, you guys talked about this recently. I'm in New York City now, and the the hot roasted nuts on the side of the street yep. in New York is yes. one. Yes, it's a fine uh, choice. That was number that was five. Number five. On his list. A yeah. fine choice. Why I write these things down. I I love coffee, but I think coffee smells a good. It's deal also better. on the number list. Two. Nice. Again, Let's say you're doing very well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I would say. Um, uh, uh, I don't know. I I. I feel like no, the, you guys are not going to agree with this, but I think sometimes fresh baked bread smells better than it tastes. Mm. It was all alive. Wow. Toast. Toast was all yeah, alive. Toast. Uh, toast I'll have, but fresh baked bread. <laughs> no, it's delicious. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not delicious. I'm saying that the smell is like sends you into a fit of rapture and the taste is excellent, but not quite as maybe good as it Thank suggested. You. Thank you, Mike. I don't These know, guys what, keep falling for that trap. We're not saying yeah. it's bad. We're saying <laughs> right. it. We're, well, we're actually saying it's quite good. How about the fudge from Kilwins? Mike, uh, oh, Mike wow. Ryan, put, uh, Mike Ryan put number one, the truffle. That's insane. Truffle doesn't have any smell that I can remember or Whoa. identify. What? Oh, wait, 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 smell. It, it it's, not a, it's not an aroma. It's not an, like, an aroma that fills a room the way that coffee is. It's or truffle is, is, say, but really. truffle is 95% aroma. But if you're near it, yes. But it, it doesn't, like, you ha you're you saying you have to, like, get close to it and smell it and then put it on your whatever. Your you're going to the wrong truffle joint. Pasta. I'm not going to any truffle joint. <laughs> Truffle fries uh, taste every bit as good as they smell. I don't think so, man. I, I, I mean, I'm with you that truffles are overrated because every time you eat truffle fries, they cost like thirty eight dollars, and then you're like, these are just worse fries. These are just fries with salt and then another thing that I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and do stat of the day here. You tell me Ben Zobrist wasn't calling, any good. Calling <laughs> us from I didn't New say York. he wasn't any good. I said he's not great. <laughs> Let's start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Yes, Mike. Aren't you supposed to tell me that it's brought to me by something? Uh, not every time, but it is brought to you by Zip Recruiter. Zip Recruiter, the smartest way to hire. Folks, yesterday on the show, uh, Stu Gatz seemed to realize for the first time that the Mets are good. <laughs> and a huge part of that reason for that is that uh, their closer, Edwin Diaz, is having an insane year. He has 91 strikeouts in just over 45 innings, almost exactly two strikeouts per inning. Now, I know he's a closer and he's not a starter. However, to put his K rate into perspective, if he threw the same number of innings Nolan Ryan threw in 1974, Edwin Diaz would finish the year with about 665 strikeouts. <laughs> if he threw the same number of innings as Kid Gleason from 1893, Diaz would have 761 strikeouts. If he threw the same number of innings as Pretzel's Getzian from 1888. That's right. Pretzel's Getzian. The pretzel. Pretzels uh, Diaz, all lie. Diaz would have 808 strikeouts. And now I know what you're thinking, Dan. What if Edwin Diaz threw the same number of innings that Pud Galvin did in 1883? Well, uh, that's what I was yeah. thinking. In that case, Edwin Diaz would finish the year with more than 1,313 strikeouts. I think you made up Pud Galvin. Look it up, baby. <laughs> that a boy. A lot of guys in that era named Heine, as I recall. A lot of yeah, uh, the, a lot the, of Heine <laughs> minutiae, and there's a lot of the, there's a lot of kids. There's a lot of like kid kid Johnson and stuff like that. But there is a real guy named Pretzels Getzian in 1888. And he threw 404 innings in a single year. <laughs> See you later, Mike. Bye.